Hey friends, welcome back to the Maple Leaf Barn. I'm Libby and today we're just doing a bunch of seed starting. If you're new to our channel, thanks for watching. And if you're stopping back in, thanks for hanging out with us on our flower farm here in Southwest Ohio. We love having you on our flower farming journey as we grow together. So a lot of our seeds are ranging between 110 to 150 days before they need to be planted out. And for us, that means that 100 and change days is Mother's Day. So we need to go ahead and get started with a bunch of our seeds starting for those cooler plants that like the shorter days and the cooler temperatures. We really have to be forward thinking with how many days are out from your first frost when you would go to plant or even when you want to harvest. So you have to be thinking really far in advance. And if you have the space and the resources to start your seeds early, that's a plus. If you don't have the space or the resources and you're more of a home gardener, then starting your seeds too early can definitely be a problem. If you don't have enough space to up pot them or enough grow lights to service them all or even enough space outside to go ahead and get them out under row cover. We are starting eucalyptus today and some snapdragons. We also need to get yarrow going and a couple other things that are really long growing. We have already started our lisianthus seeds. I went ahead and started the Voyage 2 White Improved Pelleted Lisianthus and the Voyage 2 Pink Improved Pelleted Lisianthus. As far as eucalyptus goes, um, we're starting the Silver Dollar Eucalyptus and the Baby Blue Bouquet variety, and those are also from Johnny's. Um, we grew those in abundance last season, and we really love them. They are incredibly fragrant, and they go really well with everything. I know that in a lot of design in 2024, a lot of floral designers are trying to kind of get away from eucalyptus, but I'm not saying that it needs to be used in every single design aspect, but as far as growing it on the farm, we definitely will still be growing it, and I think we're going to be ramping up our production of it. So I'm excited about that. We went ahead and used the Bootstrap Farmer mesh trays that we will be using with our uh, seed starting this year, so I'm excited to see how those all turn out. I made soil blocks for the first time. That was actually a little bit trickier than I expected. I didn't get the water ratio quite right, but I will do a little video on seed starting with a soil block, how I did it. Um, there's a plethora of information out there on soil blocking. This is just the first time that I've ever tried to do it, so I might as well bring you along with me. There's 20 blocks in one section, so it's really cool how the bootstrap farmer trays you can kind of see they are set up in the exact section that their soil blocker comes in. I don't know if all soil blockers are the exact same, but I just got the one from Bootstrap Farmer. So you can go to water in the channels where there's no soil blocks and the soil blocks stay over the mesh, which allows you to bottom water if that is of better interest to you, which is what we're doing. And I'm hoping that that makes it a little bit easier to just manage and deal with the humidity and all of that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is just put us up close so you can see the seeds in my hand. I'll be using a toothpick with water because a lot of these seeds are really small that I need some assistance. So I'll just be picking up the seed with one hand and planting it with this toothpick. Most of these seeds are needing a lot of hydration and they don't want to be dried out. So I'm going to keep all of those types of seeds together and hope that it all works out. Eucalyptus really likes to be hydrated and so does uh, Lysianthus, I guess. I've heard that. So that's why I'm doing it all together in the same tray. And I'm hoping that then I can take some of the soil blocks that need to be potted up sooner and be able to just easily remove them and pot them up if I need to. So we're going to start off with some snapdragon seeds in the variety Costa Rose 2 and Potomac Ivory. Costa Rose 2 is a medium to dark pink. The days to maturity that we're looking at here 
are between 100 and 110 days. So it's definitely important to get these done early so they can be mature enough to start harvesting for Mother's Day or early June markets. Moving on to the Potomac Ivory, this is a white flower color with a hint of soft yellow and green. It is a group 3-4. So that means it's pretty much a main season, all season variety. Its stays to maturity are slightly longer with 110 days to 120 days. For both of these, it takes about 7 to 14 days for them to germinate. And the recommended temperatures are between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely putting on a little heat mat will be helpful to encourage germination. Light is required for germination, so it's important to make sure that you place the seed in the middle of the cell and you can cover it with a little bit of vermiculite, but I actually ran out of my vermiculite, so I'm just leaving it right there. And if I start to see algae growing, then I'll just add a little bit of cinnamon or maybe later I'll add some vermiculite. I will be bottom watering or lightly misting just to make sure that we're not going to be covering up that seed with any displaced soil. So you want to be really careful to place the seed where it's going to receive that light. Later on, we will transplant these cells into larger cells so that they have more room to grow. Snapdragons really like to be up potted every few weeks after you start to see growth and you can pinch snapdragons after you see between four to six leaves or it's, you know, four to five inches tall. So that will help you start branching out your plants. And instead of having one stock, it'll have multiple stocks and you'll end up getting many snapdragons to cut. And then it'll probably have a second flush later in the season and you'll be able to uh, cut on the same plant multiple times. So like I said, snapdragons are a huge part of our June markets. Most of the other flowers aren't really ready yet for the summer arrangements, but snapdragons are definitely blooming and that's why we have to start them now in January to make sure that they're ready to go by June 1st or even slightly earlier for Mother's Day. So we're hoping that we'll have some available for us in mid-May and we will place those in bouquets with tulips and with ranunculus or other early spring flowers. Okay, I'm just going to speed it up now that you've seen it in real time. And that way you can get to see a full picture of what the tray looks like when it's complete. I'm going to put the humidity dome on and then put them under the lights where they will stay in the grow room on a heat mat for a little while until I start to see germination and then I will probably take the heat mat off and let them grow on their own. Seed starting is always such a fun thing because you take this tiny little speck of a seed and it turns into this glorious plant at the end of the season. So it's a tedious task, but it's a rewarding task. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.